Feed My Starving Children began with a broken heart. We went to Honduras with a hundred doctors and nurses to help the poor. It was good works. And one day I stepped back to smell the roses and what I saw literally devastated me. He saw the starving children and the mothers bringing the children to the doctors and the doctors handing the children back to the mothers and just shaking their heads and saying, we can't do anything for them. And the Lord brought me to my knees, broke my heart, and had to come back to Minnesota to get a group of businessmen together to form a company called Feed My Starving Children. We began to develop a method for mass feeding the world. They developed a number of foods, some soups and some cereals and crackers and things like that. Nothing worked. I took that around the world. Nothing worked. It failed. I came back and I said, Lord, how do you do it? And he says, here's how you do it. And then he teamed up with Dr. Dick Fulmer, who's a retired vice president of research for Cargill, and they developed this formula. The formula as we know today is uh, rice, which is worldwide acceptable as a food material. But rice does not have a large content of protein, so we felt that we needed a protein kick. Textured soy protein has over 50% by weight of protein. The third ingredient is the dehydrated vegetable fraction. Uh, the final ingredient is a vitamin and mineral mix that's been added to a chicken flavoring. The vitamins and minerals are there to try to meet the recommendations of WHO, the World Health Organization, and UNICEF and other organizations that have looked into this. Now, one of the other factors that was very important was the selection of the package. We had purchased some food from a packaging outfit down in Chicago, and that was too expensive. You've got the cost of the container, you've got the cost of, of having somebody that wants to make a profit. And at the board meeting, somebody just said, uh, I wonder if we can package this manually. The then sitting board of directors packaged the first package. And it worked pretty well. We did it uh, sitting around or standing around a table. And then we, uh, in 94, opened it up to uh, some church groups to come in and do it. One night, a representative from Feed My Starving Children came to our church and was looking for volunteers to pack food. I thought, what a great idea for my granddaughters, my daughter and her husband, young couples, older couples. Then the youth got involved. The first experience was wonderful because there was lots of little kids and all you could hear was chicken, vegetables, soy, and rice. It was just <laughs> wonderful. They would be so full of enthusiasm. There was no difficulty in getting uh, several volunteer groups to come in very quickly. And pretty soon the word spread, and before we knew it, we had uh, more groups than we knew how to handle. As the volunteer packing grew, Feed My Starving Children began partnering with other organizations to get these meals to the children in need. This is Channel 5 Eyewitness News at 6. Well, thanks to several Minnesota corporations, 12 tons of food are now on their way to Haiti to feed starving children. It'll make 150,000 meals, which will last about three months. It all flew out of Twin Cities International on a cargo jet donated by Northwest. They just happened to have a 747 freighter flying empty to Houston on Saturday. And we were able to get the food out there and get it to Houston on Saturday, get it on the mystery ship on Monday and got it into Haiti. Feed My Starving Children was finally up and running. The shipments went to countries like Rwanda, Belarus, and Paraguay through partners like Operation Blessing. Operation Blessing is a blessing. We have been expanding beyond all reality. I, I need seat belts to hold me down. I'm so excited. Despite the enormous potential of the organization, by the late 90s, FMSC was struggling with methods for expansion and funding. And that was always our struggle. How can we find ways to generate funds to support Feed My Starving Children? Quite often, uh, we as the board of directors would have to uh, use our own credit cards to buy rice or soy. One time that I did a $10,000 loan to Feed My Starving Children just to keep it going. As honest differences of opinion grew wider and funding continued to lag, the board and the founder graciously parted ways in 1998. When we separated from Dick, it was a godsend in a way, and uh, 
got us going in a, in a direction where we had to be independent on our own, couldn't depend upon him, either for direction or for money. Now on its own, FMSC went through some of its leanest years as it searched for a new leader. We just were not growing, and um, so that was an early indicator that there was, an, there was an issue. I was trying to do things the way the world would do things. We were not getting anywhere with that, and we needed to make changes. And first and foremost was that it's God's work, and once we got that straight, you know, things started to really take off. Diane Eaton initiated uh, really the start of rededicating the organization back to serving Jesus. And that led to the hiring of Mark Crea then in, uh, 90, in 2003. And I think the record speaks how faithful the Lord has been to us since that time. One of the things I did first was to say, let's simply go talk to our friends, our donors, individuals and organizations that have a real heart for what we're doing. And that seemed to really start to make a difference. Before new funding came in, however, FMSC's resolve to be faith-based was tested when a corporate sponsor canceled a $10,000 gift. I knew I had to go up and tell Mark, um, who was a brand new executive director at that time. And while we were meeting, there was a knock at Mark's door and a surprise visitor who came in with a check for $10,000. He was from the very same corporation. Actually, the corporation matched the $10,000. So. While $10,000 was taken away one day, $20,000 came in the very next day. Which obviously was an encouragement to all of us who were on the board at that time. We then looked to how we could uh, move ahead to the future and achieve some growth, increase the number of meals that were being packaged. So you go from 17,000 volunteers a year to this year, nearly 700,000. From one site to six sites and national mobile packing from working in 19 countries around the world to 70 countries. Seven employees to 170 employees. All of that growth in a matter of years is quite remarkable. Where do you go other than to thank the Lord? This spring, FMSC reached another milestone as it packed its 600 millionth meal. 600 million meals is a lot of meals and it, I can feel nothing but, but absolute joy at that. It's awesome to see the growth and it's awesome to see how faithful God is. I mean, I know from the early days that this work was the Lord's work. In recent years, Feed My Starving Children has continued to grow in new ways, holding mobile pack events in dozens of states across the country, increasing the rate of site expansions, opening the FMSC marketplace to help our partner communities, stretching to respond to disasters like the Haiti earthquake and East African famine, inviting a new level of support from volunteers, and embarking on sustainability initiatives with partners in Nicaragua and the Philippines, all while continuing to be a good steward of every investment. When we approach people and ask for them to invest in Feed My Starving Children, we ask for a donation. They have every right to ask me how much of my donation actually goes to the feeding program. The number is 92%. On the other end, how much of our food actually gets to the kids? 600 million meals over 20 years, 99.97%. We work really hard at it. We find these embedded partners that do that, but the lion's share goes to, I believe, God's protection on this food to get it to these children who desperately need it. It shows that God is at work. He is providing the people that this organization needs to make the next leap. And I see him opening doors with the right investment. Um, we can change that 18,000 number of children who die every day. We're ready to do that. And I believe that's what's gonna happen to this organization. That is God's work. And when you do that, that gives you a high. And it's unbelievable and you can't help but be excited. And I think that's what's kept more people coming back.
Thank you for being a part of our history. Please join us for another 25 years.